will take a sip of tea. I'm just going to get in here. This is just a little dry brush. And, just, and it's not a particularly expensive brush. It came from a company called Sea Whites, which is like a local art supply company. Pretty fluffy, so you don't, you do not need really expensive brushes. I think people, people think they they spend a lot of money on their equipment. It's going to make them paint better. Um, I'm sorry, folks, that ain't true. You can paint brilliantly with very average kit. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of trying to get some kind of like a fuzzy edge. Tiger's got really black eyes. Not a lot of white in their eyes, at all, but if any. So what I'm just trying to do is I'm just kind of create that nice kind of broken outer edge. The trying to go between the actual eyeball and the sort of the fur surrounding the eye here. So this is kind of all outer edges. Um, the thing to be careful when you're painting away is to think about the direction of the fur is growing. Now, like humans, like most animals, there's kind of a hot spot on, on a tiger. And it's kind of somewhere up between the eyes. It's the point where the fur grows up the head and out, which is where I'm painting now, up and kind of up and out. And the point where it starts to actually start going down. And if you've got any, if you've got a cat, a domestic cat, you have a close look at them when they're sleeping. Like I look at our Henry cat, our little little boy. Um, he usually wakes up furious that I'm that close to him, but he has a little perfect rosette of and it's just just about here on him and it's just kind of this kind of really weird area where the fur is growing in two directions at once now the pupil is black I get in there and do that and again you don't have to have perfect edges in fact I, I almost sometimes prefer a slightly soft a soft edge to this almost with the edges slightly broken out so I actually don't want a perfect edge. That's okay. So I'm just going to literally one thing is I'm just going to kind of sweep the paint out from the center, um, and I just want to cover my pencil line. One of the things you have to be really super careful of is is keeping the the shape right. Not not letting this get out of shape. Um, and it's easy they go they go kind of oval shaped they go they lose they just kind of lose their way a little bit um and then everything tends to grow a little bit and then you find yourself really struggling to try and make the eye look natural super careful i think i just grew that back about right okay that can sit and dry for a few minutes and i'm going to just put in of the black of the eye they, they don't have a white they have a black area of the eye and that's really that's really up close to here that, that's kind of a pretty a pretty good looking eye i might just um, throw some, some random sort of strokes up there now this is all being done in acrylic so this is going to dry real quick so i'm just literally um blasting away on this I'm not really kind of overly careful okay so it's kind of my the black section of the eye if I brush a little wash I can find the water here it is hands up how many people have dipped their brush in their tea uh, I know you have I think I've drunk more paint than I have care to mention over the years Normally people would just kind of try and paint this part of the eye just, you know, just go for a nice golden yellow colour and, and and it just wouldn't have that glow. It just doesn't have that I forget the name of it, it's a Latin name, Lactericum, something or other. That thing that um cat's eyes do, they 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 reflect light back at you. Clean a mirror in the back of the eye. Um, big cats are crepuscular, they, they tend to like to be more nocturnal than they are daylight living. Um and their eyes are adapted for night time and they have this extra um, piece of uh, anatomy in their eye that gives them a more than even chance of seeing things in the dark and cat's eyes are 
not that great in daylight. Not actual focus, apparently. So I was reading up about all of this. But they, they don't see too well in daylight. Um, they have a, a fuzzy kind of focus. The colours are a bit strange to them as well. They like purples, reds and greens. But they don't have kind of a huge, hugely good eyesight. But they have got an incredibly well developed um, movement sensor in their eyes. So if you're ever kind of startled by your cat suddenly looking past you at something in the distance, um, it's not that they can focus on things, but something may have moved, and it could be a leaf on a tree, it could be a piece of fluff or a bit of dust, but something moved in their line of vision, although they can't see it necessarily very well. I just want a kind of a broken edge in there, so I want to be brightest on the outer, a little bit kind of flared into the centre here. So if cats do that sometimes, it's because they, they've sensed a movement rather than an absolute you know, a bird. They haven't seen the bird, they just know it was movement. So literally what I'm doing here is I'm just dragging a sort of a semi-dry brush around on the surface here, just kind of blocking it in. So this is the this is the light coloured fur that's below the eye. They have a piece of white fur that goes right above and a piece that goes right under the eye. And it extends down to the sort of the, the top of the cheek bone. See how that's now that's dulled down now. Ones I just put on here that are still slightly wet, they're nice and bright, but see how this has gone kind of a flat grey colour. So I would go back over that. I'd probably leave it like another couple of minutes, but if I just go back in and beef that up again, you can see what happens if I put on a nice coat. So that kind of immediately kind of picks up the colour again. There we go. So on and so forth. So this kind of like a basic underpainting for an eye. So that's it. That's it for the, the acrylic stage. I would say this is what I did uh, a little while back um, about six o'clock this night. So that's nice and dry. Here we go. So here we go. There's my, my palette laid out. Here the paint sits on a plastic coated surface, waterproof or oilproof. So my paint stays wet. And where I folded it back, this is like a blotting paper for me. But there is a little bit too much oil in there for my needs. So I am literally going to just take a little band-aid and just pop it by there. Okay, so that's... I've been nattering that has picked up some of the oil. Now, let's have a quick look at the brushes I'm using. These are not Bob Ross brushes, but these are little brushes which, um, again, these are cheap and cheerful, but I quite like them. So I cut them with a, with a pair of scissors and I just snipped them and made them into uh, these little angled brushes. They're nice for shading work. And that's the technique I'm going to do. <coughs> As I mentioned, it's, it's called um, dry brush work. Now, what I really want to do here is I want to try and get like something of a bit of a nice glow around the eye. The original, the original picture's got a nice sort of golden glow to it. And I've got this cadmium yellow colour here. And I'm going to take paint from this wet pile and I'm going to put it down here in the back of this palette and I'm going to smudge it around. And what I want to do is I want the oil to sink into the paper but to leave me a semi-dry pigment practically nothing coming off, practically nothing at all. So it's, it's quite, kind of semi-dry, and you can always kind of just test it on your, on your can test it. And you see, and you can rub it, and what happens is it leaves a little tiny mark. But the longer you sit your brush in one spot and rub, so I'm watching this into, I'm just working here, but I'm watching it on the monitor to make sure you can actually see what I'm doing here, make sure I'm not out of shot. You see, if you just kind of sit there and rub, the longer you sit in one spot and rub, and the harder you press and rub, 
the deeper the colour. And what you paint over affects how that colour looks. So I was putting that cad yellow over this beige colour here, which is just soft titanium, one of my favourite background colours. But if I put it over white, see what happens. So I'm going to get a teeny tiny amount and I'll scrub it out, dry it out a little bit. I'm going to literally just lightly run this across the top of this white. Just going to rub that in. And when I put that white on there, you saw me brushing out when I did the little bit on the other eye. You saw me kind of brushing the paint into the centre here. What I was doing is I was actually creating a bit of texture. You can kind of see it on the camera. I'm just drying my paint as I go here. So when I run my brush across it, some of those little flecks of paint are going to catch. I'm going to get that nice kind of texture in the eye. So it's actually working it in. It's going to be brighter on the edge and a little bit darker in the centre here. Now you can see that I've kind of got that slightly different colour towards the centre and a slightly more gold on the outside. It's kind of the effect I'm looking for here, so I want it to look more textured. Now, even though, as I said, this paint is, is dry, and I'll do that with the inverted commas, it's actually not totally dry, because if you grab yourself a baby wipe, so you make a mistake and you don't like what you've done, you just take yourself a baby wipe, and don't scrub too crazy because you'll take off the acrylic but you can pretty much remove most of that colour now the cameras do a good job of picking up all, all the detail if you leave that to dry that colour will fade to almost completely gone see how this, this eye doesn't have any 3D yet it looks kind of like it's sitting flat on the surface of my paper it doesn't it doesn't look like it's set in and what I need to do is I need to add a couple more colors to it so that was cad yellow I got some burnt sienna and I got some more armor I'm going to start off with some burnt sienna I, I want to give the eye oh, burnt sienna, there you go I want to give the eye a bit more of a, of a deep golden sort of glow almost a really brown glow so I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna just a little bit and I'm going to do the same again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have a little bit of a shadow above the eye and this just adds that night a nice little bit of warmth to the top of the eye and again it doesn't matter too much if you clip that black this color is again semi-transparent and, and even if you touch the black and you wanted to get rid of it I'm just showing you the baby white trick and you can put a baby white around the end of your brush handle and use it as a little clean up tool so I'm just going to kind of take some of this around the top of the eye just to kind of warm it up that looks like a real strong area there doesn't it yeah, see so this is kind of because it's still kind of semi movable you can just over rub stuff and you can distribute it around the eye a little bit more zoom in a little bit closer again it still lacks that depth that tells me that it's set in and this is where you need to really kind of brace yourself a little bit I'll just wipe my brush off. You've got to be prepared to really add a lot of dark into the eye. I know a lot of people get kind of nervous about doing that, but unless you do, then you're never going to get the eye to sit into the, the head properly. So I need to, I need to increase the, the depth of shadow across the eye here. And this is where you might want to go into something like a raw umber. I'm maybe even tempted to go for some ivory black. Yeah, I'm just going to scrub this out. Let's just see what happens when I start working some of that colour over the top. Essentially what I want to do is I want to lose that line there. I don't really want to see that particularly 
I want the top of the lid to almost become the same colour as the eye. And I want to bring it down to about there. Okay. Oops. Let me check my colour is a little bit wet there. Normally what I would do is I would pull down my colours beforehand and I would left, leave it sitting on the palette for like 20 minutes, half an hour, just to completely dry out. But for the demonstration, it's OK. Now I'm going to go into my ivory black. And this is why I love this this particular technique because you can you can use a brush and and you can add soft details you can add little bits of color into an eye put it a little bit darker that's a bit of my reference picture again so there's my reference and that's that shadow line around the edge that I'm looking for you see I've just got the startings of it and I could spend a little bit more time in it you see what I mean my bad colors a little bit off that looks a little bit too much uh, a little bit too orangey yellow, it must be a little hair greener. I could probably get it if I took a tiny bit of blue and worked it in there. I could probably get to a more greenish tint. But for the for the purpose of a demonstration, I think this is gonna work okay. You get the gist, I think. I'm just gonna literally you using my brush on edge here, so I'm using just the point of the brush. I'm just reaching and I'm putting in a series of little little strokes in here and put a little bit of, there's a little bit of texture in the eye there as well it's not quite it's more sort of looks more like granulated if I just use my brush I just just pressing into the eye you can get kind of some little flecks of dark So my eye is starting to look a little bit more realistic every every little tiny piece that I add to it but as I say my eye is a little bit lifeless it doesn't have that kind of natural glow and that's what I'm going to put in next I'm, I'm going to switch brushes here I'm going to use just a little detail brush it's just a little synthetic brush all the brushes I've used tonight are just synthetics um, cheap cheerful so the color I'm going to mix up for it is um is a little pale blue colour. So I've got a little bit of white, a tiny little bit of blue. Blue grey colour is what I'm looking for. A little bit of black. And it might be the kind of colour I'm looking for. Yeah, a little hair more. Um, well, some people might, but they'll do it once, but that'd be it. Um, so most of the time they've got the daylight shining down on them, and you end up with a series of little marks, which is actually the, the blue of the sky, and it's filtered through their eyelashes. So and this is round, so this, this eyeball is round. So I'm going to pull down a couple of three, some little marks on here that supposed to be the sky now I'm not sure if that's quite white enough it needs to be a little brighter I don't want pure white I want blue white so you have to adjust your colors as you go is that bright enough yet maybe not so what you're seeing here is the sky actually being filtered out through these lashes you can see the stroke go Kind of follow that sort of shape on that side, and I want to go the other side. And if I didn't like that at all, if I thought mm, that's not quite doing it for me, I could rub it off. But I just might disturb the underpainting a little bit as well, but I think that's okay.
And this bit is not being done dry, it is being kind of done quite wet. Okay. That's what's called a secondary highlight. Sort of like an off-white colour. I'm still using sort of like a blue-grey colour. So it's a little bit off-white. Okay, and I want, I want a little bit of that at the back corner here as well. In the corner of the eye. I'm not going to go all the way along with that. That looks, that, that looks a little bit over to me. My eye. Thank you. It's very kind. It looks a little. That looks a little bit too bright. Okay. So remember, I said you could just get rid of the baby white. Just fuck it out. Just knock it out. Take it out, knock it down a little bit, but just a little too bright. Truth be told, I probably missed a little bit of acrylic under there, a little bit too much, and I probably should put a little bit more. I should have closed the gap a little more, so I probably see a little bit of that coming through, but it's okay. For a quick knock up demo, that's, that's what I'm hoping for here. Okay, so that's kind of. That two parts of the eye, that's the, um, it's called a secondary highlight, the, the blue-grey colour. Yeah, just a little damp brush and just... Yeah, it's water mixable, so you can just use a little damp brush. And just wiggle at it. You can move paint around a little bit more. This is just pure white, and I'm going to go somewhere up around about sort of. I guess if this o'clock place would be around about two o'clock time. And I'm going to put myself in a nice couple of pings of light. we go. I think that is me just about out of time. So there we go. Um, it's me playing around, having some fun. Colours may be a little bit off, but kind of using that back a little bit for you. So my colours aren't exactly right, it's just what I grabbed, but that's what I was painting from, and that's what I'm looking to get. So just a quick demonstration of how to paint a tiger's eye. With a little bit of playing around I could probably get match the colours exactly. Okay. So painting wildlife, in particular painting the eye is one of those critical things to kind of get it right. Um, and if you can if you can just kind of get some fun, just paint a bunch of eyes. I mean just just cover a canvas with a whole bunch of eyes.